In this lesson, we'll learn how to change the symbols of the different features in the map so that it's easier to read, and so that viewers of the map can more easily understand the information being displayed. First, we'll look at how to change the symbols for points. To change the symbol of the colleges, we'll need to access the properties of the layer, and this can be done in two different ways. You can right-click on colleges in the table of contents, and choose Properties, or you can just double-click on that college's layer. In the Layer Properties dialog box that opens, there are a number of different tabs along the top. We want to click on the Symbology tab. There are many different symbols available, and you can click on the symbol that you'd like to use. Underneath all the symbols on the right, you can adjust the size and I'm going to make this symbol a little bit larger. For all of the symbols that have a blue outline and a gray fill, you can also change the outline color and the fill color by clicking on the color patch. I'm going to change the color of this symbol to yellow and give it a red outline. If I wanted to get rid of either the fill color or the outline entirely, I would choose no pen for the outline or no brush for the fill. You may have noticed that the coastline of the towns layer looks a little bit strange. This is because it contains polygons both for the land area comprising a certain town and also for the water that's a part of that town. And by default, all of the features for this layer show as the same color. We can change this so that the different features will be different colors based on any of the attributes of the layer. Because the Towns layer has an attribute that indicates whether each feature is land or water, we can change the symbology so that the land is one color and the water is another color. Just like with the Colleges layer, we'll want to go into the properties of the Towns layer to change its symbology. And we open the properties either by double-clicking on the layer in the table of contents, or by right-clicking on it and selecting Properties. Once in the Layer Properties dialog box, click on the Symbology tab. You can see that the options that you have for a polygon layer are somewhat different than the symbology options that you have for points layers. If we wanted to change the colors for all of the features, we would simply click under the color patch for fill color, and for outline color, if we wanted to change the color of the outline, or use the outline style and choose no pen to get rid of the outline entirely. To see what this would look like without closing the properties dialog box, click the apply button. However, what we want to do is to give different features different colors. At the top of this dialog box, there's a drop-down menu next to legend type that by default is set to single symbol, which means that all the features in the layer are displayed using one single symbol, in this case that symbol being a green fill and no outline. We want to click on this drop-down menu and choose unique value instead. We are now given some new options for the symbology. The classification field indicates which attribute the color scheme will be based upon. So if we left the classification field as town, then every town would be a different color. In order to make the land and the water different colors, click on the drop-down menu and find the attribute called land. We'll then need to click on the classify button to display the different values of that field. For this attribute of land, Y indicates yes, meaning that the feature is land, and N indicates no, meaning that the feature is water. To change the color of the water, I click on it, and then I can change the colors as I wish by clicking on the color patches. I'm going to make the water blue and take away the outline, and then I'll click on the land, make it green, and make the outline of the land a darker shade of green. So now when I click OK, the dialog box will close, and it will apply this color scheme. Lastly, let's look at changing the symbology of lines. Previously, I had turned off this transportation layer because at this scale of the entire state, 
it was just too crowded and too many roads. I can change the symbology of the transportation layer so that all of the tiny little roads and driveways are turned off and only the major roads will display. Once again I'll access its properties by double-clicking on the layer in the table of contents and choosing the Symbology tab. Just like with the Towns layer, instead of having the roads display as one single symbol, we want to display them as unique values. So I will go ahead and choose that in the drop-down menu next to Legend Type. The classification field that I want to use for the roads is called Class. When I click the Classify button, you can see that there are seven different classes of roads. Zero indicates transportation features that aren't actually roads, such as airports and railways. I don't want this to display in my map, so I'm going to click on it and then click on Delete Class. One indicates major highways, and the increasing numbers represent smaller and smaller roads, all the way down to six which represents mostly trails. I don't want the classes of 4, 5, and 6 to display on my map, so I'm going to click on each one and then click Delete Classes. Now all I have left is the larger roadways. I'm going to make all the roads black, but I'm going to make them various widths to reflect their sizes in real life. I do this by clicking on each value and then adjusting the outline width and clicking on the color patch to change the color. I can click the Apply button to preview my changes, or click OK, which will apply the changes and close out of the Properties box. Now I have a much nicer looking map that is displaying the information in a more clear and understandable manner.